Let's all stand. Thumbs up. Let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Many people do not believe in the power of the Word anymore. Many people do not believe in the power of the preach word anymore. That's why we have so many churches that are doing some of everything. But I assure you that you can go out in the wilderness and preach the word of God as John the Baptist did, and it would have an impact. Uh, it would have an impact upon the rocks, the trees, the birds. I'm here to tell you. There is power in the Word of God. And these are the most exciting days in the history of the world to get the Gospel out with the advent of the Internet and social media. And so we're glad you're here. Turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, verse 8, and I'm going to try to finish the message I was preaching on yesterday. Titled, The Church Must Unhitch Itself from W.E.B. Du Bois's Problem of the Color Line, Part 30. And uh, I fell in love with that word, unhitch, was introduced to us by Andy Stanley, but he was trying to unhitch us from the wrong, uh, from the wrong things, such as the Old Testament and, and even the New Testament. He wanted us to get our gospel from history, uh, and that is insane and heresy. But there are some things that we ought to, in the church, unhitch ourselves from. In fact, there are a lot of things. And one thing is racism and prejudice and pride, particularly in the climate we're living today, but other sins as well, numbering uh, in large numbers. The, lo the lost souls, the lost souls of black folk and white folk, Part 84, 1 John chapter 2, verse 8, again a new commandment I write unto you which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. And he that saith, he that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. And he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, we praise you and we thank you for the fact that you have been so good to us down through the years. We praise you and we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your great grace. And we thank you also for your wrath. We thank you, Lord, for your loving chastisement upon your people and the wrath that is going to come on this wicked, sin-cursed world like the world has never seen before. So we, as true born-again Christians, Lord, help us to truly confess our sins and to repent of our sins and to turn from our evil ways with your help. Lord, for every sin that we repent of, you have 
given us the grace and the help to do so. And it is amazing. And we pray that you'd wash and cleanse our hearts, our minds, our souls and spirits, and our consciences in the precious blood of Christ. So that, so that we can still hear the conscience that you put in us. So that we can still hear the still small voice of your Holy Spirit. For we all know when we're wrong and we all know that we are wrong about certain things right now. We know on the inside whether or not we're wrong about hating people. Not only people of other races, but our own family members and friends and uh, neighbors uh, and church members. And Lord, we, there's, there's that still small voice of the Holy Spirit in the Christian and then there's the conscience. And uh, we thank you for what your servant C.S. Lewis said that uh, how that you speak to us uh, in our conscience and uh, uh, there are times you shout at us in our trouble and pain and that's how you shout at us and get our attention we thank you for that shouting we thank you for the speaking to our conscience and uh, we thank you, Lord, how you speak to us in other ways. But, Lord, we are not doing that well in your church today, be it the black church or the white church or the mixed church. And, Lord, we need to pray. We need to seek your face. We need your help to help us to see that, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, to humble ourselves, and to get back to you, our first love. So now, Lord, again, for Jesus Christ's sake, uh, crucify our flesh and flesh and anew. Empty us of self. Help us to die to self fresh and anew and fill us afresh and anew with the fullness, the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit To not only preach your holy word but to hear your holy word and to repent and change we know that your holy word as it goes out never comes back void and we are amazed at that and we give you the glory praise and honor in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake amen you may be seated Ladies and gentlemen, Dwight L. Moody said, If we have got the true love of God shed abroad in our hearts, we will show it in our lives. And I will add to that that it, it will not be a perfunctory mechanical thing it will be a God thing however you do have to make a choice your will is involved in loving people uh, I can't explain all of that only God can explain all of that but like anything else we have to choose to do certain things and we have to choose not to do certain things but God will help us and it will not be a perfunctory mechanical thing it will be a God thing from our hearts and you can't fake it you can't you can't be a phony about it and people can detect whether or not you're a phony and a fake and, and it's quite disgusting to see it to be honest with you we will not have to go up and down the earth proclaiming it. No, no, you don't have to go out and, and 
slap somebody on the back to express how much you love them and how much you love having them in your church. Uh, that would scare the daylights out of some people. We will show it, he says, in everything we say or do, it will come from our hearts. And so, beloved, in our last message on yesterday in this series, we saw how those who hate their brothers and sisters, even in Christ, are accepting the darkness of this world rather than the light of God through Christ. On the other hand, those who love their brothers and sisters in Christ are truly walking in the light of Christ. They see Christ's sacrifice as the foundation for the love they should have toward others. And they work to show Christ's love towards others regardless of their physical differences. When we show love to our fellow Christians, we will cease to be a stumbling block to them. And due to the history of, of uh, white Christians who are white people who are supposed to be Christians oppressing those of other races in America, some people have taken the view that Christianity is also an oppressive white man's religion. And uh, I beg to differ, that's, uh, that's not true. But there are many blacks who believe that. And it's hard to convince them otherwise. The truth of the matter, the matter is the racism of the past whites towards blacks <clears throat> and slavery and all of that has done great damage to the cause of Christ. Everybody knows it. Nobody wants to say it, but it has. There are millions of folk who will go to hell because of the bad testimony of some folks uh, who claim to be Christians on both sides. Black and and white, red and yellow. All races have pride. Unfortunately, many black Americans have been pulled away from the faith into false religion through the work of groups like the Nation of Islam and people like Malcolm X who painted Christianity as a slave religion. Thank God for uh, T.D. Jakes who has one of the greatest jail ministries in America. You wouldn't think that a big old church like that would have a huge jail and prison ministry. But he uh, took the uh, uh, took the uh, idea, if you will, uh, uh, from how the Muslims gained so many men. They went into the jails and converted them. Every year, I believe. Uh, Dr. T.D. Jakes uh, has a graduation helping men and women get out of jail and get a job. One of the most important ministries in, in the nation. And uh, we thank God for that because that's what the Muslims did. That's how they got so many men and converted so many men and turned them against the white man calling them a blue-eyed devil. <clears throat> I'm not considering the fact that all white people don't have blue eyes, but that's another thing. So many have been damned to hell, however, because of this racism thing and prejudice. And I, I know there are people who don't like for us to talk about it, but it needs to be talked about because it's still a problem. 
And by the way, if black Christians and white Christians, white Christians and black Christians don't start praying together, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Folks are going to die uh, because of it in this country. Because everybody, as uh, the Bible tells us, does not have faith. And these people who are talking about there may be a, another civil war, and, and it, it, I agree with that, and I have said it myself. I said it before them. And I also said uh, white folks are going to win that war because they have more guns than black folk. So I think black folk and white folk and white folk and black folk need to start praying together, those of us who name the name of Christ, and we need to denounce racism and prejudice and pride. <clears throat> and it's all coming through the political system. We've never seen it like this, quite like this. People pulling off folks' red hats and uh, make America great again hats. That's just ridiculous. Just last night in Minnesota, all hell was breaking loose already. Hacked out house, of Trump supporters uh, standing firm behind him and just having themselves a time outside all around the building. Black Lives Matter and everybody else matters, the gays, the homosexuals and everybody it's a shame before God how America has fallen while Trump was speaking uh, in rare form the Democrats were having a whole debate on how they're going to love and help and support and uh, stand for and stand with the homosexuals now there's so many letters to the LGBTQ, they put plus, whatever else you want to be. You want to be a dog, a cat, whatever. They put plus now. They don't even try to <laughs> say it's too much. Everybody wants, you know, this wickedness and evil. And we have a whole uh, party dedicated to this and waxing uh, eloquent about it. It is so demonic. And if Christians, white and black, don't join together against this evil and pray, I don't care who is the president. <clears throat> and stop this foolishness. This country is going down the drain. While the sins of others are no reason to walk away from God's offer of his grace, One wonders if the rise of the nation of Islam in the 1940s and 50s and 60s would have uh, happened if white supremacy and the rise of the KKK never happened. And by the way, the black supremacy of the nation of Islam, because they think they're better than white folks, in fact, they call white folks the devil, and they call the Jews worse. So the racism and the, and the black supremacy is just as bad as the white supremacy of the KKK. However, Islamists are openly living in darkness, while the KKK claim to be Christian. Yet they burn crosses in front of black churches to scare the daylights out of them. Both sides are in danger of hellfire. Both sides. If you have hatred in your heart and pride in your heart, and you, are, you have not repented and you hate others because they're different, 
and you have that pride with it, uh, you're on your way to a devil's hell. You have never been born again. Now, who are you to tell me that I'm not, I'm not the one? The Bible says that. If you're living in sin, unrepented sin, there's something wrong somewhere. The KKK pulls a stumbling block to those trying to find out the truth of Christ and so do the nation of Islam group <coughs> when we are governed today by the light of God we will love our brothers and sisters as Christ loves them not only will we abide in the light ourselves, but we will be a shining example to others. And one of the things that love does, it lets people have a little room to be themselves. Just because somebody is different does not mean that you have the right to hate them, and that includes homosexuals. We ought to stand against their sin and their evil and their activity and their uh, drilling a hole on the other side of the boat. But we don't have to hate the people. We don't have to hate anybody. You can tell people the truth in love. Not only will we abide in the light ourselves, but we will be a shining example to others that they may also walk in the light of Christ without stumbling upon our sin and out of the faith. And by the way, loving people is not avoiding telling them the truth. There are absolutes in this world. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And all Christians uh, who love people, you will tell people the truth. And you will tell them the truth on the way to telling them the gospel. You will tell them the gospel first and foremost. And you will tell people the truth about the sin and the evil that uh, people are doing. And that you will stand against it. And see, some people foolishly think that trying to camouflage that and cover that up and not stand for what is right is going to, uh, you're going you're gonna to scare the people away. No, scare them where? Scare them where? Hell number one, hell number two. Or hell number three. No, we need more preachers telling people, now what you're doing is wrong. You're going to die and go to hell for what you're doing. You know, this little couple you got here, two women coming to me for counseling, two men uh, looking googly-eyed at each other. Y'all going to hell now. The Bible says you're going to hell. Let me show you. Okay, I'm counseling you. I'm counseling right now. I'm not, we didn't come for that. I'm counseling you right now. you got to deal with this. Otherwise, I can't counsel you any further. Y'all are going to hell. You two right here, over here, male and female, y'all shacking up. You're going to hell too if y'all don't get saved. So what is being saved? Okay, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Let me show you. People are ignorant. People are blind. And we have pastors in churches who are refusing to tell people the truth. I guarantee you, if you show three, show the people three verses on hell fire, they'll 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 start listening. I don't care what they're doing. Tell people the truth. People who are committing adultery, tell them the truth. People who are drunkards, tell them the truth. And on and on we can go. Liars, tell them the truth. Some of the biggest liars are in church. 
some of the biggest fornicators and adulterers and adulterers and adulteresses and even homosexuals are in the church and pastors are afraid to confront the issue you're not helping them you're hurting them God put you there to confront them to stop them from going to hell and living hellacious lives man stop covering up stuff stop trying to sneak up on people waiting five years six years before you even get to the gospel they're gonna be dead and in hell you'll be amazed at how many people get saved if you, if you point out their sin and tell them how to remedy the problem remedy the problem and get saved Stop lying to people. Stop being silent. Stand up for what is right, what you know to be right, which you didn't know before you got saved. But now you know. Stop being afraid to tell people. In fact, that can be a point of witness for you. Anyway, one of our favorite hymn writers, Isaac Watts, wrote these words now by the bowels of my God his sharp distress his sore complaints by his last groans his dying blood I charge my soul to love the saints to love the saints Clamor and wrath and war be gone. Envy and spite forever cease. Let bitter words no more be known amongst the saints, the sons of peace. The spirit like a peaceful dove flies from the realms of noise and strife. Why should we vex and grieve his love? Who seals our souls to heaven, heavenly life. Tender and kind be all our thoughts. Through all our lives let mercy run. So God forgives our numerous faults. For the dear sake of Christ, his son. Love everybody. And love must be tough. Love oftentimes does not have a smile on his face. Jesus loved the people, but he wept for the people. For they, they were uh, sheep without a shepherd. Sometimes love weeps. For the verse that we all in the black church learned, and we didn't learn any other verse, was Jesus wept. Two words. Jesus, God wept. Sometimes, as C.S. Lewis has stated, love is stern. Uh, love will tell you something to your face without cracking a smile and then say, I'm not playing with you, and then walk away. Get it straight. Change your attitude. That's what love will do. Love will say, if you don't get your act together, you're going to get fired from this job that I gave you. Without cracking a smile, I ain't playing. Ain't nobody, ain't no, no. Love does not play. <laughs> That's one thing love does not do. Love doesn't play. Okay, now love plays with a little child. But love does not play with folk who know better. See? See, we got, we got this fake, phony, ushy love, this smiley, sweet little sugary love in the world today that's not helping anybody coming from the church. We done dressed down to our shorts and eyes odd shirts trying to fit in with the world instead of standing firm on the word of God. Trying to fit in. Doing everything the world does to try to, to, to win them, and they don't want they don't want to hear it because you don't even act like a Christian. You don't even look like a Christian. They want something different. 
young folks are running from the church because grown folks got this little smiley, sweet, syrupy love that means nothing. All my children are serving God right now. We pray for each other all day long together. We text each other uh, every morning. And we say, I love you. And uh, we'll share a verse. So, and uh, we're praying for you. We're praying every hour together. And we thank God for that. But you know where that comes from? It comes from stern love, tough love. My children know I don't play. And, I, and nobody loves fun and food and uh, being jovial and joyful and cheerful. Nobody is better at that than I am. I love a great time. But I don't play when it comes down to sin and evil and rebelliousness and bad attitudes. Love must be tough. Dr. Billy Graham said, a child that has a bad attitude towards his parents will uh, have a bad attitude towards everybody else. You've got to correct that. Yes, and I, I, I've never felt like getting the rod of correction to whip somebody's behind, but love led me to do it. And that's one of the reasons why uh, things have turned out as well as they have. Love is in the rod of correction. And God loves you so much when you leave home. He's going to pull out the rod of correction on you. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on. I, I, God chastised me one time because he loved me. And I, I thanked him. I thanked him. I said, Lord, thank you that you loved me so much that you didn't want me to stay the way I was. And every Christian who's been chastised by God has said something similar or went through a similar thing. So away with the smiley Cheshire cat syrupy love. That's not real love, man. C.S. Lewis dealt with it. We need less smiley love and some stern love, some firm love, some love that does not smile. No, here's the deal. If you don't repent of your sins and trust Christ as Savior and get out of that homosexual relationship or that adulterous relationship or that fornicating relationship, then you're going to hell. Now, I'm not smiling. And so, dear friends, if you are a Christian listening today, here are three things you need to do. Number one, confess and repent of your own sins. I'm not playing. You know you need to do that. Your conscience tells you to do that. The still small voice of God tells you to do that. You already know what your sins are. <clears throat> Nobody has to tell you. We already know when we're wrong. That's why C.S. Lewis said there's got to be a God because we have a conscience. How many of you have been checked on the inside of you? You've been checked. You know you're wrong. What you just said to your wife is wrong, and you know it, don't you? What you said to your husband is wrong. That attitude that you're copping right now, you know it's wrong, don't you? You know it's wrong in your conscience, and if you're saved, you got the Holy Spirit dealing with you as well. Number two, so confess your sins and repent. Number two, pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ to confess their sins and get back to their first love, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> You want real revival? You want New Testament revival? Get back to your first love, the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, pray for souls to be saved. And do your part by witnessing to the lost. Nothing will revive a church like prayer and witnessing to the lost. You don't need any more programs. You don't need any more super guests. You don't need any new methods. Just pray. And start telling folks about Jesus. Nothing will revive the church quicker than that right there. 
Now, dear friend, if you are with us today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in Him for your soul's salvation from sin and hell. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now. Jesus Christ, who preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. Jesus Christ, who preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, Jesus Christ said. And hell is forever. I believe the saddest aspect of hell is that once you go to hell, you can't get out. Now, hell is bad news, but I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And all you have to do is believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. And believe in your heart that he suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross for your sin. He was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him in heaven. So pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul. And you say, well, what about my life right now? God will do some wonderful things in your life. Yes, Jesus Christ will do some wonderful things in your life while you're living on this earth. Yes. The Holy Spirit will do some wonderful things in your life. Yes, you should have peace. You should have joy unspeakable. Peace that passeth all understanding. And many other blessings. But you will also have tribulation. I'm not going to lie to you because Jesus Christ didn't lie to you. He said, in this life you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. My main calling is as an evangelist. Uh, my job is to get you saved from hell and get you saved to heaven. Uh, the pastors that God has called can help you with all of the other things that you're concerned about in your life, your marriage, your family, your children, and all that. My job is to get your soul saved from hell. And I stay in that lane pretty much. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, for the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So call upon him today, believing in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to join a church. You don't have to be in a church to be saved. I got saved outside of a church. You don't have to get baptized to be saved. The thief on the cross never got baptized. You don't have to give any money to the church to be saved. You don't have to do any good works to be saved. You don't have to sing in the choir to be saved. My mother made me sing in the choir so that I could play uh, football, and I hated it, and I wasn't saved. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, and thou you shall be saved. 
And if you're ready to be saved today, pray with me the sinner's prayer right where you are. If you're driving, pull over if you can. If you're in traffic, you're okay. And repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, that I have done evil in your sight. I have lied before, I've broken your Ten Commandments, I've stolen things before, I have coveted after and lusted after people and things in my heart. I've dishonored and disobeyed my parents. I've taken your holy name in vain and many other sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins, my failures and my faults. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered and he bled and died on the cross for my sins as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, including mine. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to truly repent of my sins past help me to turn from all of my evil ways and my evil life and help me to follow you Lord Jesus in the new life for it is in your name I pray amen now dear friend of mine if you believe if you if you believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose on the third day, early one Sunday morning by the power of God. Allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ, receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So, dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please email me at dw3 at Gospel Life Society or whatever email is on your site, and we'll get it. And let us know. For well, we have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, and this is designed to help you grow in the faith, it tells you what you need to do next. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. So until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is our prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father, God in heaven, we know that Thou art there, and we know that You're here, and we thank You for what You have done. Thank You for Your Holy Word that when it goes out, will never return void. Thank You for the gift of Your Holy Spirit. Thank You for Your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has made all things possible. And we give You the glory, praise, and honor, and we thank You for allowing us to play a small role in your grand evangelistic enterprise. We still pray for over three million souls to hear the gospel from this pulpit and to be saved. Uh, and
And if that has been done already, we give you the glory. If it has not, Lord, help us to keep on preaching until we see you face to face. We pray for over three million Christians to be revived again and to get back to their first love. We have faith in you. We know that this is your will. Let your will be done. And now, Lord, bless us and the rest of the people all around the world listening and participating with a great afternoon, a great evening, and a great weekend. And help us, help us all to show up in uh, the church uh, who are saved in your church on Sunday morning and at other times. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. God bless you, dear friend. Until next time.